and uh, it was ex explained to me that I was doing a 20-year commitment. They called it the 20 and back. What's the sequence of events that led to you becoming a whistleblower and that has led to what we're now seeing with this push towards disclosure? I was contacted by uh, actual an higher density ET group uh, that uh, has now been known as the uh, Blue Avians. Didn't you claim that you were speaking with Anshar at some point in time? Yeah, that's uh, when I meditate. Those are my guides. Okay. And who? And that's a future species living inside the Earth? Yes. And you communicate with them on a regular basis? Yeah. And it's also a part of my IP and uh, creative arts that we're making movies and video games out of. So you're saying that no one else can communicate with them but you? Well, yeah. Well, who, well, they're my spirit guides. They're, they came from me. And so you're saying Anshar is, is unique to you. No one else can communicate to them but through you. Let's see. Anshar. Oh, just answer my question. It's in my franchise Bible. I, I don't, it I is don't... my creation. I'm a content creator. Understand? Whether I have my life stories mixed with some... Uh, drama, which I've always made public as well, and in this book. Do you remember my question? Do you have my question in mind? Yeah. Okay, what is my question? The Anshar, the Anshar are a creation. It's not my question. My question is, can anyone else communicate to Anshar? To something I created? Other than through you. That's something I created? That's something I trademarked? That, that's part of my trademark? No. Okay, so the only people who can communicate to Anshar are you, correct? Yeah, it's a part of my meditative process. Okay. If someone wants to create up a meditative process where they're talking to the Anshar, there's nothing that stops that, and they will believe it, and it will allow them in their higher self to connect. It's a tool. So, they could, so someone else could connect to Anshar as well and have an experience with Anshar as well? If, yeah, if they imagined it so. But if they decided to go out and do a television show about it or write a book about it, they might have a problem. But can't they have their own, they couldn't write about their own experience? Their own experience with something, I mean, okay, it would be the same as a Star Wars character. No, but if someone else has an experience or had a meditative state, can't they communicate and, and talk about their experience? Well, they can communicate and talk about whatever they want. This is America. Sure. But if they went out and said that Han Solo was giving them information in their dreams or in their meditations and they started writing books about it, guess who's going to come and sue them? Do you hear this? Like, honestly. This guy's whole story. I spent months watching Gaia and him and that whole Corey Wilcock story. And here you go. Nobody else can actually uh, communicate with it because it's his imagination and his property. He made it all up. All of it. So you're saying that this Anshar, it's real. It exists as far as you're concerned. And that you communicate with Anshar, correct? It is a meditative tool that I use. And... A lot of my... You're, you're not, you're not answering I questions. am answering your question. Is if it you just real hold. or not? It is not physically real. It was created by me as a part of my meditative uh, practices. Do you communicate with something named Anshar? I, in my meditations, I use the Anshar as like an avatar to communicate mm -hmm. and gather different information. Avatar being real and independent from you or part of you? It would be a, it depends on how you view a person, their higher self. Um, Are they, is Anchor independent from you or is it part of you? It's, a, it's my creation. It's part of my higher self. So no one else can communicate with it because it's your creation. Right, unless they decide to create it in their head, and, but then they're not creating it. Well, 
they, if they create it in their, their head, what are they doing? They're borrowing my creation and delusionally uh, <laughs> having their own experience. And they can't write about their own experience. They can't write and profit off of, just like uh, Han Solo, the whole Star the Trek. This is an IP that is like Thank Star you. Trek. September and um, it is uh, dramatizations built on top of my experiences. And that people do that all the time. And their so you're, uh, so content you're saying that, is not So you're saying that Star Trek is real? No. Okay, no. So Aunt, Star Trek's not real. Anchar is not real either. Correct? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's all a part of this intellectual property and... So the blue avian that he talks about that comes in the blue sphere that comes down to him and takes him and then takes him to the other places like the moon and stuff are also not real. Co content that's created by you. Yes. Okay. And all of the delusional people in the uh, community who take this information... So is he saying that everybody that has listened to what he is saying and has believed and, be and now are under a delusion if they are communicating with anything that came from his imagination? It's, it is what you call fan fiction. Okay. So people that are talking about the Anshar and, and all of these different secret space program mm -hmm. things, it's fan fiction based on my real life experience that I dramatized. But, but, to create the and so people are delusional if they believe it. They're delusional if they <laughs> believe they were in the secret space program and in contact with the Anshar, who are my creation. Do you oh believe you're part of the secret space program? I was part of a secret program. I was. And whose secret was it? What do you mean? You said it's a secret <laughs> space program. Whose secret? <sighs> it was a government secret, I guess. Which government? United States government. Okay. And so you say that you're part of the secret space program? I was a part of, I was brought into my lab programs when I was in elementary school, brought to Carswell Air Force, Air Force Base, where we went through all sorts of uh, experiments and training. Which Air Force Base? Carswell. It's now joint, and it's joint, some, uh, they changed it. So Fort Worth. Okay. And so because of that, you're part of the secret space program? No, I was brought into the, a program, a secret space program uh, based on that training. And um, after that, I did this. And so the secret space program was introduced to you when you were in elementary school, right? Uh, when I was 17. I thought you said elementary school. No, that was the uh, training, the MyLab training, where they took us out of school and uh, did training and experiments. And we say they took you out and did training and experiments. Who's the they? The people that were working with the elementary school uh, and junior high that I used that I went to and uh, Carswell Air Force Base. Do you know who they were working for? The Navy. Okay. And so the Navy was taking you out of elementary school and junior high and training well, you? I'm sure they had uh, Mrs. Hill, who was a contractor for them, was uh, also teaching at our school, took us out of class, took us to the Carswell Air Force Base. Uh, for, for what all went on. How often would they take you out to do this? It was maybe one day uh, a month, and then sometimes it would be like a little spurt of, uh, you know, more more like two or three days in a week. Okay. And how, how many years did, was it that frequent? From when I was six or seven up until 17. It's like 10 years. I'm just going to say, the reason why I started listening to him was that part of the story. Because those kind of crazy stuff actually happened to me. I'm not talking about being taken by blue av avians. Or, but the school system being picked up and tested 
Um, and that's actually was listening to Corey Good, where I found out how unique our age negative people were. So it was not from him, of course. It was from somebody else that was listening. I was putting one of my unique stories um, in um, to what Corey was saying. And she said, she said back to me, are you RH negative? And I said, well, yeah, but what does that have to do with it? She goes, well, don't worry about it. You're going to be safe. You're, you're one of the protected ones. <laughs> so that got me, got me researching. That was the beginning of the RH negative. But it was because I went through a lot of this kind of stuff in testing as a child. And so this is where a lot of us get gulled into this guy, because we do have a lot of these strange um, things. If I remember correctly, he is not RH negative, and I think he's a big old bullshitter. I think his whole story was made up in his mind. And maybe some of these things did happen. Maybe he might have been a little bit unique. But it is very sad because he's really misled a whole lot of people. For a very long time, he's been, and you got to, you know, how, Corey, you got to think about David Wilcock, who goes along with Corey Good. He he bought this hook, line, and sinker, and David Wilcock has been like the forefront to promoting. Um, I That was the only reason why I, I kept my subscription was to Gaia, was to watch, and I watched every episode that these guys put out. And you got to remember if Corey Good is a fraud, which is very clear from this interview that he was, everything that he said was made up in his mind, and he is not a good guy. You can hear it. But that means that David Wilcock has been bought it hook, line, and sinker, and so that you're taking your information from somebody that you're believing, somebody else who is easily fueled, fooled just like you were and when you were watching him, just like I am. So, I mean, this is the thing is, we have to actually connect to our own spirits. And, uh, yeah, be careful about this. But, yeah, I'm glad he's being exposed. As a result of that training, what did you do differently? As a... I'm going to need that rephrase. Sure. As a result of the secret space uh, training program that you had in elementary and junior high... What did you do as a result of that training? I still don't get what you're saying. Okay. Uh, because of that, what did that cause you to do with the secret space training? What did it cause me to do? Yes. Like, for instance, uh, you went to, you said you've done 20, 20 and back journeys where you go away for over 20 years and you come back. Yep, trademark. And, okay. A trademark. And, uh, you've done that and you've done that many times, right? Correct. That's the dramatization on top of the story. Like I said... Are you saying it's dramatization or is it real? Part of it's real, part of it's dramatization. What part like is, I've said about all of this. What part is dramatization? Be more specific, please. Sure. What part of the 20 and back is dramatization and not real? Well, the 20 and back itself is my creation. <laughs> that's why I trademarked it and that's why it's a part of my intellectual property. So he property. never went anywhere. So does that mean it's not real? It's dramatization? What does it matter if it's real or not? Oh I'm asking gosh. you whether it was dramatization or was it real. It's um, a real part of my dream or delusion of whatever you want to call it. I created created all of this as on top of the uh, um, training that I did have and the experiences that I did have. I extrapolated this stuff out and created it. Okay, but it's part of your dream or delusion, you call it, correct? With whatever y'all want to call it. Well, what do you call it? I call it my intellectual property. Okay. And you state you've gone, you've gone away for over 20 years and you come back and you haven't aged, correct? Well, the 20 and back story in the book is that you're taking off planet, you serve 20 years, your age regressed, and you're put back in time. Did it uh, to where you though? were first removed. Is that the story or is that what happened to you? It is the story. So it's oh. not what happened to you? Not necessarily. Well, it's A lot of these things are, are memories that I had that I was right, I wrote down. And some of these memories could be real or they could be creation. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, uh, but uh, 
I created on top of them, uh, used my experiences to create on top of as a... Uh... This man should be sued for everything that he has done, for the lies that he's done, for the manipulation. He, honestly, he should be sued. Uh, foundation. Are you sure of any experience where you went away for 20 years and you came back and you hadn't aged to be real? I... I, how, I mean, how would I be totally sure if that sort of thing weren't real? Are you sure that you had lunch today? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Are you as sure as having lunch today as you were about any of these experiences like the 20 and back? Like I said, the 20 and back is my creation. It's a part of my intellectual property. Uh, me creating it means it came out of me and that it is my story and it was never anywhere before. Makes it my intellectual property. Uh, that's not my question. My question is, today you went to lunch, right? Well, listen, you, I mean, listen, I've told, no, no, listen, I have told you hey, I'm that I question. made up stuff <laughs> on top of it, and in this book it says so. <laughs> so, yes, I did make up stories about the secret space program, extrapolated off of my uh, experiences that I told you about earlier. Okay, fair enough. Are you the only person who is in the secret space program? No. There were others? Right. So if someone your question, else, you know, your question was, so did I disparage anyone? So my question is now, if you were not the only one there, why couldn't someone else talk about their experience in the secret space program? As long as they don't talk about the stuff that I created based on my real, my, my real IP here, I, in it it says, I created a lot of the stuff. I created um, uh, Dark Fleet. Dark Fleet didn't exist before I talked about it. Now all these people are popping up. I was on Dark Fleet. I was on Dark Fleet. It's part of my and all sorts story. Of fleets that are darker in color through, throughout. But all they're sorts they're of using every bit of my IP. And they use hundred percent of it. So it's every, they base all of their story on my IP. All of it. All of it. hundred percent. Yes. Just a recopy of, of your they work. Recopy. That's why Gaia is being sued. Word for word. Pretty, pretty much. Same color. Same everything. No, I mean, well, you, they, said, you said pretty much, or is it all? It's pretty much. Well, they, that's people, no, it's, they, the people will come in and they will say, oh, okay, I was in the Secret Space Program too, and all of these things that Corey had. Hey, I don't know if you guys know this, but he actually claimed to be possibly Enoch. Just letting you know. Talked about, well, uh, yeah, I was a part of that too. Well, guess what? The stuff that I've talked about, some of it created out of my mind in this book as a part of my IP. If they are out there making money and uh, doing things to harm this IP, this storyline, then I say something publicly. Okay. Do, do you put a footnote in your book that this is embellished uh, and this is not, this is fictional, this is uh, not, not real? It, it says that there's Corey with his real story, and here's the fake, the fake or the uh, science fiction story built on top of Corey's story. It says that in here. Okay. <laughs> yep. There you go, guys. Now we can put this guy to rest as being... Well, you choose what name you want to give him. <laughs> 